Okay, hi teachers. I'm here to talk to you about the 10-10 the, the rule, uh, passes and best. We're gonna start with the 10-10 rule. Very simple, it says the first 10 minutes and the last 10 minutes of class, no one should be out of your room. They, everyone should be in the room, no passes given, no runs to the bathroom. They should all be inside the room for the first and last 10 minutes of class. That's gonna take us over to the vest and anytime you leave the room, you should have the vest on. If you're going to the bathroom, wherever you're going. If you're going to a different uh, a destination other than the bathroom, you should have a pass with you that says where you're going in the building so that if you give someone a pass to go to the front office and we find them in the gym, then we know that they're not where they're supposed to be. Uh, the other thing that we're gonna cover is the passes per quarter. Each student gets three passes per quarter. Now, the best way to do is make you a list and as they get their passes, mark them off so you know exactly how many they've done. They're gonna ask you for more than three. They're gonna insist on more than three and it's gonna be up to you to keep track of that so that we don't have mass numbers of people in the hall during the course of the day. Hi teachers, the purpose of this video is to give you a little guidance in regards to discipline and what's expected of um, you when it comes to uh, conduct, when it comes to dealing with classroom behaviors, classroom management, and any other types of behaviors. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is a, something that I noticed first semester, which was detention notification. Okay, so we are really big on making sure that you have good classroom management, making sure that you're building relationships with students. However, it is so important that when students do misbehave and you do assign a detention, it is so important that you give proper notification. Um, there's been times when students miss detention and you guys write an office referral, I call the parent, the parent says they didn't even know their student had detention. Um, so please make sure that you're calling parents, making them aware of the detention, sending home some type of detention notification letter. It can be something that you already have a template for and you just write the name, date, and time of the detention, but just make sure there's something that go home so that when I call the parent after they receive an office referral for a missed detention, I can say, hey, the teacher documented that they sent home parent notification or detention notification on this day. So please make sure that you're properly notifying parents of detention. Um, the second thing that I wanna talk about is calling for a dean to your classroom. Um, the deans and behavior coaches are here to support you in any way that we can. Um, whenever you have a student that violate one of our non-negotiable behaviors, please call for a dean. Um, our non-negotiables include major infractions as described by the r, &R handbook. Um, there should be no inappropriate words or actions towards the teachers, including cursing or threats. So if that ever happens, please call for a dean immediately um, or any serious classroom disruption, meaning that you cannot conduct instruction because the student is grossly misbehaving. Please call for a dean. We'll remove them. Um, and the final thing is when students are just blatantly refusing to follow instructions and related to, uh, related to conduct. So for example, if you ask a student to be quiet and then they won't be quiet, they just keep going on and on and on and on and on, please call for a dean because that means you cannot instruct your class. We will come get them. You don't even have to give us a long drawn out reason why we're coming to get them. When we come to your classroom, just let us know which student or students that you want us to take out of there. We'll remove them from class, but you have to make sure that you immediately write an office referral. Um, that's another thing that's gonna be tracked this year. As we remove students um, and take them to in-school suspension, Mr. Watson, our in-school suspension teacher, will be doing a Google Doc that just states the student that was removed from class at, and the time so that we can have a log of the students that we're removing so that if we see a trend in the same students being removed from classrooms, we can make sure that we're appropriately discussing this with administration, parents, and any other team that we need to. Um, the final thing that I would like to speak to you about is dress code. Um, we're constantly in the hallways fighting dress code. 
You know, when we come to your classrooms, we expect for you to do the same thing. Please do not allow students to sit in your class in violation of our district dress code policy. Students should not have hoods on in your classes. They shouldn't have hats. They shouldn't have bonnets. They shouldn't have anything over their head unless it's related to their religion. Um, if there's any if there's any reason why they can have something on over their heads, Mr. Freeman will send out notification, or any administrator will send out notification, letting you know that it's okay for that student to have any headgear on. Um, earbuds are not allowed in class unless you have approval by administration prior to that lesson. There's no reason why a student should be sitting in your class with earbuds in their ear. Um, when you have a sub, please make sure you let your sub know those same expectations, okay? We have to make sure that we're all on the same team as this because when we're in the hallways fighting that and they go to class and do it, it just defeats the whole purpose of having that rule. Um, again, there's no, uh, no skirts or no holes above the knee. Um, well, the skirts can be fingertip length, so just remember that, I'm sorry. Um, but no holes above the knees, no cursing or vulgar language on the shirts or any inappropriate pictures on shirts. Guys should not be sagging in class. Um, and if you have, if they, if they have a non-fixable dress code issue, please just call a dean. Or if it's just something you're not sure about, it just looks, doesn't look quite appropriate, please call for us. They can't wear pajamas to school. And pajamas also include, like, the polo, um, lounge wear pants, they can't wear those to school. Anything that has like a boxer opening in the front is considered pajamas. They cannot wear those to school. No slippers or house shoes, those cannot be worn to school either. Um, if there's just, and this all detailed in the Rights and Responsibilities Handbook, but if you have any questions or concerns, don't ever hesitate to call me or any of the deans, okay? Have a great day, thank you. Right, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is, is the classroom referral system. With the classroom referral system, we have to remember that we reset every nine weeks. So if we're tracking disruption, then that's one that we're tracking. If we're tracking defiance, then we're only tracking defiance. But at, at the end of the nine weeks, every bit of that is a reset, and we start over again. But remember, when we do this, that is for all those behaviors that are not the non-negotiable, you gotta call a dean to come and get a student for. So the classroom referral system is in the Google Docs. If you do not have access to it, let Mr. Freeman know. He actually has the, uh, those are his, that's his document, so that's his rights that he has to share it with you. In this process, you have to remember that you've already given them the first warning. So the second one, you write it up in the classroom referral process, and then do an intervention. So it could be the classroom detention. You're gonna make contact with the parent. If it happens again, you're gonna write an actual focus referral. That means it's gonna to come to one of us. Um, in doing this, just try. You're gonna do your very best to contact the parent, just so the parent knows where you are with this. But again, if you do a lunch detention, that lunch detention is gonna be served by you, with you, and make sure that, like Ms. Teasley said, just make sure that you document that so the student knows when and where he's gonna be. Um, the next thing, we're talking about the electronics policy. Um, with the electronics, we're starting to see a lot more cell phones in the room. The, the policy is that there are no cell phones in the classroom. You cannot use them in the classroom unless you've already gotten prior permission from the administration. Um, the only time they can have a cell phone out is when they're in the hallways between classes and at lunch. Uh, they are never to have earbuds. They are not allowed to have those from 8 o'clock till 3.10. Um, there's no, there's no wireless, there's no AirPods, anything like that. So if we come in a room and we see those, we're not supposed to be seeing that. All those electronics are supposed to be put away. If you have any questions, just see one of us. Um, we'll be more than happy to, to help you with it because we do realize the, you know, some of this, it gets a little overwhelming, but we're more than welcome, you know, come on in, send an email, come see us, um, and we'll walk you through all of it. And we appreciate everything you guys do.